Hello, my name is Nick, and I'm the creator of the Clarinet's Extended Techniques Library. Uh, this is a, a follow-up to the Flute Extended Technique and Tenor Sax Extended Techniques sample libraries that I've I've put out. Uh, this one so far, I think, is my favorite. It's uh, it's the most extensive by far. It features both soprano and bass clarinet. Uh, bass clarinet being an amazing instrument to create pretty insane sounds with. So I, I just wanted to do a quick walkthrough, show you uh, what this library is like uh, on, on to use on the inside. So uh, first of all, we're going to start with just soprano. I'm just going to run through these sounds. Um, we're going to start with the, the Aeolian sounds, which is just blowing air through the instrument without causing the reed to vibrate. <laughs> I did a combination of keeping it uh, somewhat pitchless as well as doing variations on pitch with fingering. Um, that's really, really cool when we add various uh, distortion. I like to use Sound Toys Decapitator, which is a uh, fantastic uh, distortion. as well as their crystallizer, which is a great uh, echo. Um, very, very cool. And echo and more. It does more than that. Uh, chromatic runs I find a little bit comedic. Great for that sort of thing. Um, uh, flutter swell, which is a really cool flutter tongue plus crescendo. Very cool if we also add... The Sound Toys plugins to give that a little bit of extra kick. Half tone, uh, I really should call this half step trill. Oh, excuse me, I have the uh, distortion on. Great at comedic tension or doubling for dramatic tension. Whole tone trill is my favorite. Very cool, uh, especially if you do maybe a whole tone scale. One of my favorites. Sampled so that you can do uh, more intensive if you do a harder um, velocity. Multiphonics is the uh, interesting fingerings that lead to the clarinet uh, doing several different pitches, cycling extremely fast. I think it does three. And. Um, pretty crunchy, pretty. Um, uh, abrasive, I would say, but different. I, I did a selection of one of you know of hundreds of different multiphonic options that I thought represented a good range of what the soprano clarinet could do. Okay, so uh, that sounds really good as well with distortion. Some very very cool stuff in there. Um, then we just have the staccato patch, which I love. Um, it features round robin, so you don't need to worry about machine gun effect uh, on repetitions. Moving on to bass clarinet, we do have the key clicks, um, which is just simply closing the keys in front of the microphone. Sounds a little ridiculous until uh, you realize it's a great percussive instrument. Um, I just did a little unquantized sample here. Adding separate things like a crystallizer to it um, can suddenly really expand that. Next up we have slap tongue, which is creating a uh, thunk sound by uh, vacuum between the reed and the mouthpiece. So much, much poppier staccato, basically. Really thunks, top, top. Uh, next, we have just the typical bass clarinet staccato, which is a lot more mellow. Right. Uh, then we have descending bends, which I really like. Let me make sure I don't have anything on. Here we go. Descending bend. Very, very cool uh, transition effect, or just just to, to add certain moods to your composition. 
begin adding various things like crystallizer. Very, very cool sound design. Uh, we have a flutter tongue sustain. Great bass point for adding all sorts of sound effects or just giving your composition uh, a, a more tense edge to the bottom. Go. That was when I ran out of breath. Okay, uh, flutter tongue swells, uh, just like in soprano clarinet, same thing. Uh, very cool. To add the decapitated there. All right, then we have a harmonic gliss, which is starting at a low note on the instrument, holding onto that fingering, and then alt uh, alternating your, excuse me, altering your embouchure to create higher pitches above it. I have both ascending and descending uh, split in the same patch. We have ascending and descending. Very, very cool, one of my favorites. Uh, and then if we add a little delay, it can be very cool. Next, we have the halftone trills, which you're probably familiar with. Overtone Madness, which was just me doing some overtone stuff and recording it and sampling it. Just for affectation on your recordings. Very cool if we add a little bit of effect to it. Overtone pulse, just simply something I made up. Basically, I would take a, a pitch, low down, uh, pulse it with airflow, and then use my embouchure to try to pull some overtones in while I did that. Kind of gave it a effect. I'm sure it exists already, but uh, I'm going to take credit for it. <laughs> just kidding. All right, uh, then we have split overtones, one of my absolute favorites. That's where I just take a pitch and split it amongst its various overtones. I try not to let it rest on one or uh, the other overtones. Adding these add a very cool... One of my favorite, very Hans Zimmer, very Dune. Um, it's a great starting point instead of just maybe a sine wave from a synth. Uh, we have a sustained pulse, just simply me playing a note with a bit of a pulse. It's all done with the job. Great for adding some more edge to your compositions. And then finally, the whole tone trill. Especially good, in my opinion, for anything. Impression, Debussy or Ravel. So low down, but yet bright pulse um, and pad for you to use. That is uh, all the patches that are in it. I hope that was thorough enough for those who are wondering what this library is about. Um, that is, as with everything, just the starting point uh, where you can take these sounds. They are so versatile, and I'll surprise myself using these um, maybe staccatos that I would think were just only bright I'm able to add effects to or manipulate to creating dark percussion. It's a very, very, very versatile library. Um, feel free to leave a comment or uh, email me directly, just nicktoretta.com for the website, and uh, let me know if you have any questions or suggestions. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks.